Hi, it's Grad. It's a summer edition of the wonderful world of marketing, and we're in our brand new studio. Um, as you can tell by the great green screen behind me, um, this is actually kind of a cool story. I love this company. We're in a room inside our Lincoln Square facility. The previous occupants um, left the building and left an entire broadcast studio behind. Nobody knows about it. And so Randy and I have moved in and we're using it to make the wonderful world of marketing. So we'll see how long that lasts, but it's nice to be in an actual studio with real lights and we've got a camera set up that we don't have to take down every 15 minutes, which is awesome. So, uh, and hey Randy, thanks a lot for getting this set up. Nice job. Looks, looks fantastic. I've actually been doing a lot of presentations on Windows App Portals, really looking at how App Portals you know, integrate Dynamics CRM, Office 365, and Power BI, and particularly doing it within Windows 10. And it's a very exciting time in the company because Windows 10's come out. What can we do with Windows 10? What can we do with Windows App Portals? And how do all these things work together? We actually did a, a pretty good presentation at the Worldwide Partner Conference. And what I thought I'd do for Wonderful World of Marketing is just replay that, you know, kind of abbreviate it a little bit just to kind of get through it. But uh, you should have a little bit of fun with it and we'll go through uh, pretty much top to bottom of how all this stuff works. And so I'd like to start the presentation with this kind of concept of business insights and happy customers. Uh, if you're a partner and if you're trying to build applications that you get your customers to have a really sticky experience and an experience that is really compelling for their users, which helps make uh, your customer happy. I talk a lot these days about thinking outside the box with the Gordian knot. And so the legend of Alexander the Great, which many people know, is that Alexander the Great in, of course, 333 BC, came to the town of uh, Gordium. And in Gordium, they had this really cool thing going on, which they had this un untieable or unknotable knot or un... un, un What's the, what would be the right, unknotable, help me out over here, Randy, like untieable or unknotable, un, 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 nobody needs to hear that. Unknotable? I guess so, okay, that's <laughs> very, whatever. It's a knot you couldn't untie, right? And so the whole thing in Gordium was that they have all these different people would come into town and they would attempt to untie the knot. And there was some kind of legend around, you know, if you could untie the knot, you could be the king of Gordium, that kind of idea. It's a little bit like the Sword in the Stone legend from King Arthur. There are many legends like this in ancient times. And so uh, Alexander the Great came into town. They're like, hey, can you untie the knot? Of course he could not. Uh, and then he thought to himself, well, maybe I'll think outside the box a bit. He pulled out his short sword and sliced the knot in half. Boom, untied. And then, you know, he went on to be Alexander the Great. So I love to think about thinking outside the box and thinking about doing things in ways that people don't necessarily uh, predict. And that's kind of a cool part of the Alexander the Great legend. And, you know, he is called Alexander, you know, the Great. Right? So, uh, versus his uh, younger brother, Alexander the Not-So-Great. You want to be Alexander the Great. Um, I want to spend a little bit more time now talking about Archimedes, but we'll do that in the next segment. Un-not-a-un-un-un-not-a-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un-un